Hey, stunning people. My name is Bean, and welcome to the Salt Lick Sessions. Our next band got their name from a Grecian utopia, and they're working to cultivate that same energy in the music and community they create. This is the Arcadian Wild. Arcadian Wild. Hello. What's up? <laughs> Hi. How important is the the? Because I was thinking about this this morning. Like if I said Arcadian it's Wild, and I was more like, important than anything else. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Big the fans. Yeah. Yes. I'm, what are your names uh, individually? <laughs> My name is Lincoln Mick. I'm Bailey Warren. The Isaac Horn. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. There it is. The all important the. I'm into it. I'm into it. Tell me the uh, the origin story of the band. So we started as a college band here in Nashville. Uh, Isaac and I both went to Lipscomb University, just like probably 10 or 15 minutes away from where we are right now. And uh, we were in choir together, the founding members. 
and uh, just started playing together for fun and didn't stop. And now we're here 10 years later. Bailey joined us uh, about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been fun. Were you in school for music? Uh, I was I was a music minor. Um, I was actually a theology major, but, um, but we I was, yeah we 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 both majored in music. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm the least educated. So we're yeah we're better. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and are you from Nashville? Because you're no. based here now, right? Yes. Yeah. This is home. I was born in Arkansas. Born and raised. Yeah, we're both from Florida, but not the same part. <laughs> yeah, from Florida. Yeah. And what brought you from Florida to Nashville? Was it college? School and music mm. and everything Nashville has to offer, I think, at least for me. Yeah, I didn't I didn't come. I was interested in music coming here, but I wasn't thinking, like, I'm going to come to Nashville and do this and be in a band. It mm. just kind of happened. So, interesting, yeah. interesting. And would you say that Florida activated you on, like, a musical front? What's the mm. scene like down down in the panhandle i'm like very intrigued i will say so i started in a fiddle troupe in south florida like um, near fort lauderdale and in the middle of like fort lauderdale and west palm beach but there isn't really a music scene there but somehow i found a fiddle troupe that i got started <laughs> in and that like really you know started my trajectory in like the americana bluegrass scene but there is not one there so that's kind of why i had to leave because the fiddle troupe was all there was for me i grew up in jacksonville and there was a stronger like maybe metal and like punk scene, like and like emo music. I, I graduated high school in 2010, so that like to give you an idea of where I was at that moment. So there wasn't really music happening, like the music that we make. No, so. I will say though, I feel like there was a lot, of, a lot that you c had like brought to the table yes. from the like punk metal music. Yeah, a little bit. In Jacksonville, yeah. Oh, for sure. True. Definitely. Yeah. Do you come from a musical background? Tell me about your families and how you were raised, some of the influences that you all bring to the table. Yeah, I, um, yeah so my mom encouraged me to uh, take up piano when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, I was one of the kids that like, loved practicing. And that has uh, gone away <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, but whenever I started, I just I loved playing. And so she was like, okay, this is a good sign that I should continue to encourage this. My great grandfather uh, played, he was, he, was, he was one of those guys that played everything. He had guitars and banjos and mandolins, and all that kind of stuff. My first acoustic guitar was actually his guitar that he bought and kind of sat in a closet for like 30 years. Wow. And eventually my grandpa, uh, his son, passed it down to me. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And who were some of the people that you listened to or that you were first exposed to? Uh, the first artist that really sparked my interest as far as like, uh, okay, this is something that I want to do is the uh, the tallest man on earth. Mm. And he's a, uh, I think he's Swedish, Swedish, sort of troubadour, Bob Dylan-esque songwriter, but is just was an incredible guitarist. Lots of like open tunings, interesting finger picking. And it was sort of the first time that I was like, oh, this is, you can do more than just uh, play chords and like accompany your voice mm. with this instrument. Like this can be, you can like use this instrument to actually like w or, like with its with its own voice. Um, and I think I was like, I'm like 13 or something. And so that that set me on the path that got me here. I guess. Mm. Yeah. As somebody who doesn't know him, what's like one song that you think would sell me? On okay. The, project? the first song that I heard was called Wind and Walls. Mm. And uh, it just, I think there was a performance on KEXP radio, like on the Seattle, like they had like a YouTube uh, show or something. The way he played the guitar was he was just like almost it was so aggressive. He was almost beating. He was like pouring himself into the instrument mm. and uh, vocally just was doing a lot of things I'd never heard before. Mm. Yeah. So wind and walls, tallest man on earth. I'm excited to start check there. It out. Yeah. Is he the oh, tallest man. man on earth? No, he is tiny. <laughs> oh, is he? Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which I can also cheek. relate to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ask you both the same question. Who yeah. were some of the artists growing up that, that made you want to do the thing? Mm. Uh, for me, I think Nickel Creek was like a really big one. Um, and a Canadian band called The Ducks. They, they don't tour anymore, but um, the, their fiddle player is like huge inspiration to me and like a lifelong friend. Um, and Donna the Buffalo and Alison mm. Krauss. Mm. Those are Did you find of, these people on your own or were they exposed my to My family, my parents. Mm. My parents don't play any music and like 
none of my extended family play the instruments that they love to listen to, but they imparted that love on me and then also was like, let me get you involved in this Mm -hmm. (laughs) so we can enjoy that. And luckily I just like fell in love with the fiddle. Uh, I love that. I feel like if somebody told me where is the band The Ducks from? Mm-hmm. I would definitely guess Canada. Like, it feels <laughs> feels inherently Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. And how's it ducks. spelled? It's, it's like D U H K S. Even which more Canadian. I can't exactly. remember yeah. why. There is a specific <laughs> reason why, but it's I can't amazing. remember. And then I'll ask you the same thing. Yeah. I, well, as I mentioned, coming from Jacksonville, there wasn't like a big acoustic music scene. And I, uh, Nickel Creek's record came into my orbit when I was probably in like third or fourth grade. And I was like, oh, this is neat. But then I didn't chase down that thread for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I listened to like a lot of alt rock and like pop punk music. Uh, Reliant K was my favorite band ever and probably <laughs> still is, yeah. honestly. I'm still, I, well, I think when I was <laughs> in like eighth grade, I was like, someday I'm going to join Reliant K. <laughs> They're gonna invite me in. They are gonna know how much I love them. <laughs> And you had to settle awesome. for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is my in between thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but I, I, I think that that, like Matt Thiessen's writing, uh, I think really shaped me as a songwriter. Just, mm. just like how clever he is, and and how careful he is with words, and like how silly and fun he is, mm. also. Um, and um, John Foreman from Switchfoot is like another big writer influence for me. Um, that's like still some of my favorite music. Obviously, we. We're we're all like now into like contemporary like progressive bluegrass bands and mm-hmm. folk stuff. Like Punch <coughs> Brothers is is a big big one. Serge Ross, those people. But but that was like the music that kind of made me when I was a young lad. It's very very fun for me to learn that about you guys, and it kind of informs the music that I've heard from you thus far <laughs> and the melting pot that it's it is. A lot, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love it though. I love it though. I'm very much into it. I'm very much into it. Where does the name the Arcadian Wild come from? So. We were digging around for something that had like at least an iota of meaning mm-hmm. when we were c- trying to choose the name of the band, and I, I, we probably stumbled on Arcadia just like on a desperate Google search, but um, we had heard you know that name before, and there are, you know places here in the U.S. that like are monikered after it, um, but originally it's a pro- it's it's a province in in Greece, mm-hmm. and in mythological portrayals of it, it's this place that's kind of eternally spring sort of this like world or like a microcosm unto itself where nothing ever dies and uh, the people that live there take care of the place where they live and it takes care of them in return and so there's this sense of like mutual belonging and reciprocity that sort of flows through that place and there are in written descriptions of it there people talk about uh, how there's this perfect music that's always floating through the air mm. and we thought that was a really interesting idea and uh we we i think we just wanted to set about like okay let's see if we can make music that sort of evokes a place like that where someone can come to rest or find restoration um or like go on an adventure like you say you were a theology major yeah music minor Yes. Yes. Theology major. Very minor. Yeah. <laughs> How does the theology major play into the project now? Speaking for myself, it informs every aspect of, I think, what I, I bring to the table. A couple of years ago, well, I, I guess during COVID, uh, we, we put together this four-movement song cycle, kind of this, like, through-composed piece. Um, it's, like, sort of four songs that are, you know, pieces unto themselves, but they, they tell kind of a unified story. Um, it's about 16 and a half minutes long, which sounds very pretentious, um, <laughs> but but it's called Principium, and uh, it's inspired by the first three chapters of the book of Genesis, which is like a very niche thing <laughs> within a niche thing to like make music about. Um, and, and obviously, like, you know, I feel like everybody has like their own very complicated relationship with with spirituality, religion, with religious texts. Um, but, but there's something really timeless about those stories, regardless of like what you think about them um, and how they speak to you. There, there's a reason that they've stuck around for so long. Mm-hmm. They, they speak to, I think, something that is kind of like common and intrinsic and shared between all, amongst all people. Um, and it was, it was kind of like the most 
scriptural <laughs> we've gotten like I, I think in the music that we've made as a band that's like something we're very purposeful about like we we, we tr- I think we try our best to like set a really wide table that like lots of different people feel welcome at mm-hmm. um, and we want everybody to feel like they have their place and that they've been invited on purpose mm-hmm. that's that's really important to us and it's connected with people and it's still connecting with people. I think it's still finding its audience mm-hmm. um, and I you know I we don't have plans to do a musical survey of the Bible or anything. Like, that's not. And people do ask us. Yeah. Yeah. And don't, and don't ask us to do don't, that. <laughs> don't ask. Um, but but it's been it's been really neat to to engage with that story, and then see other people like respond to an invitation to engage it with us. Mm. I suppose so. It's it's weird, <laughs> but cool. No, that's brilliant. I feel like the the approach that you all have as a band is it feels very pastoral to me. Just mm. to come Whoa. as you are, and I will take you as That's you amazing. are kind of energy. So I'm in. Uh, thank it. you. Thank yeah, you. I'm also well, going to do a shameless plug out. I don't know if y'all know Hannah Siglin. No, I don't think so. Singer songwriter. She has a song called Noah about Noah's whole story, and it is uh, so cool. brilliant. Right cool. in line with what you're talking about. Maybe uh-huh. you can do a collab, make it a suite. <laughs> yeah. What was her last name? Uh, Siglin. <laughs> Siglin. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hannah Siglin. She's a brilliant cool. uh, traditional guitar player. And, cool. And singer. Love it. Okay. Yeah. You talk about that mutual reciprocity, mm. and do you feel like you garner that in the community that you've created around your music, or do you filter wow. that mostly through your music? Or? Yeah, all of the good things that have happened to us or that we've experienced thus far, it, it feels so difficult to take credit for any of it. Mm. Um, it it's, it's been fascinating in the 10 years that we've been doing this, watching uh, the kinds of people that have like gravitated towards the work that we do together. Um, and when we... When we come to when we do shows when we're on tour, like it's really fascinating to look out in the crowd and see all of the different types of people that are gathered. Mm. And like and and this is just purely on kind of like snap, like first impression visual judgments. Mm -hmm. Uh, But like looking out in the room most nights, we tend to think, I don't know if all of you would choose to be in a room together Mm. under like other circumstances. But there's there's something really interesting happening, I think, that's like drawing us all together um, for for those experiences, which is really, really interesting. Yeah, I, I feel like we definitely get, like we, we try to, uh, we try to offer people something at our shows, especially uh, that they can walk away with that can like, kind of get them through the next day, you know, something like, something of sustenance. And mm-hmm. I've been surprised and uh, just like humbled and honored to, like most times we receive that from them Mm -hmm. and sometimes like even more than what it feels like we offer Mm -hmm. so there definitely is that sort of like we try to take care of whether the audience is the land or the people I don't know (laughs) but or like if we're the land I don't know Uh, but (laughs) we like we try to take care of them and they take care of us Mm. yeah Yeah. I think it says a lot about you as people that you're able to receive that it Mm -hmm. feels like there's not very much ego here which I love. I'll hold it for us. <laughs> uh, no, it's great. And it's really wonderful to have met you guys at this point. Where do you see yourself in five years? Whoa. Where's the band going? Yeah. Tell me about the bus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely a bus. Yeah. Yeah, a bus. <laughs> Man, that's a, great, that's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> the, like, the honest answer is just, I hope we're still here. Yeah. <laughs> that's the honest answer, yeah, because we... We just, we love playing shows and um, we love getting to travel and we love getting to like meet people that come to our shows. Um, And there's, you know, there's a built in like level of difficulty, like doing that, of like traveling around and uh, like playing shows every single, you know, night. And the older you get, the more difficult it gets. And so I hope that in five years, we just like whatever, like however we need to grow or whatever. We don't have that we need in order to continue to do this in five years. I just, I hope that we have it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you will. <laughs> and to headline the Ryman for 10 nights in a row. There it is. <laughs> it is. Cool. Speaking it now. <laughs> yeah, there it is. We're manifesting. <laughs> yeah. We have strong manifestation in the studio here. No so. ego. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really great to meet you guys. I'm excited to hear you sing and play. Thank you for being our early session today. Thank for those you. people that watch at home, it's... It's early. Again, <laughs> the cobwebs are out. So yeah. we're making it happen. We're making it happen. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, man. Can't you see the state of my hands? 
So how dare you ask me to carry more than I already am Cause you weren't there And I swear you wouldn't have made it back At the very least you'd have done the same as me You don't really want to know how bad it went Even if I say it was an accident I didn't know it would be this hard to come clean If you don't mind, I think I'll just go to sleep and dream Dream that I was chasing the right thing I'll dream there was a good Take a look at my heart And you'll see that my broken hands weren't the only thing torn apart I went through hell for heaven's sake And all that I have to show is the overwhelming way to be alone You don't really want to know how bad it went Even if you're convinced it was an accident I didn't know it would be this hard to come clean If you don't mind, I think I'll just go to sleep and dream Dream that I was chasing the right thing I'll dream there was a good way Was it all the big misunderstanding? Did I give away my heart for nothing? No, there has to be a reason Or it's just me to blame Can you love entirely? Again, even though not one sparrow can fall to the ground without you knowing that it's gone down, it's still I still hit the ground and dream. There was a good reason. Stunning people, it's Bean. Make sure to check out the Salt Lake Sessions YouTube channel and subscribe.